أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I I have to say this is my first time visiting the the center, and I'm reminded of a story that some of our teachers used to tell us that once in one of the the lands of Islam in one of the cities there was a sheikh who used to teach, and one day a new sheikh moved in into the town to begin his own preaching activity, right? So the sheikh who used to already reside in the village or the town, he sends the newcomer a glass of water. And the indication he's trying to give is, is the glass is full. There's not enough space for both of us here. Do you understand? Like it's a competition. Like, okay, there's a new place. We don't need new places. We don't want this competition. And so the sheikh, the newcomer who just came, he responds, he gets a rose and he puts it on top of the water. To say that it doesn't matter how full it is, there's always room for beautification. Right? And I think this is, this is inshallah the niyyah of, because this is baraka really, that places of worship, Riyadhul Jannah, just opening up in a time really because one of the miracles of the ummah of the Sayyidina of the Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam is that we are khayra ummah. Kuntum khayra ummah in ukhrizat nas. We are the best of nations, right? But the miracle is that we were sent at the worst of times. And so when you see things happening, it's just a great blessing and hope. Because we're the ummah of akhir zaman. We're the ummah of the great tribulations. And when you see ibadah and the worship of Allah, because one of the things the Prophet Sallallahu tells us is that the ibadah of Allah is more powerful hina yaqfal anhu nas when the people become heedless of God. When everybody around you is caught up in all sorts of madness, but you're I'm, I'm with Allah Ta'ala. I'm in sajda. That's all meaningless to me right now. Because I'm in the acquaintance of my Lord. And this night, the night in this Shaban, that's a night, this is a night of being in the Divine Presence. Our, our, my teacher, Shaykh Yusuf Mu'tala, rahmatullahi when nights like this used to come, he used to hold gatherings, people used to come, right? Like they'd sit, wait to see words of wisdom, what's he going to say? Hundreds of people waiting. And the one thing he would say, he goes, tonight's not a night of reminders. Tonight's a night of worship. Tonight's a night of tawbah. Tonight's not a night about people seeing you and hearing this and that. <coughs> tonight's a night on what are you going to do with just you and Allah tonight? What's your secret with your Lord tonight? When everybody else sleeps, what conversations are you going to be having with Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal tonight? And so... But the, the, the nature of this is this is the prime people, right? This is, this is not the gathering. The gathering is yet to come, right? There's a gathering that inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala gives us the feet to wake up for that gathering. Because what? Allah ta'ala descends. He descends every night. But tonight he descends in a way that's very powerful. And the call is very clear. Hal min mustaghfirin fa'aghfiru lah. Is there any for you to seek repentance so I may forgive them? Hal min sa'ilin fa'atihi. Is there anybody who asks so I can give? There's an invitation. The invitation has been given. The question is, is the response there? Like when Allah Ta'ala calls tonight, are you going to be awake to hear it? Are you going to be knocked out in your bed? And sometimes sleeping is better because if you were going to do haram, then sleeping is a better. Right? If you were going to do something, if you're going to watch Netflix all night, then you better go to sleep. Right? Rather than be in the presence of the shaitan. But if you're ready to wake up, then tonight's got blessings. It's nafahat. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam, inna lillahi fi ayyami dahrikum la nafahat. Indeed, Allah Ta'ala has in the days of your time. Because Allah Ta'ala is not bound by time. He has what? Nafahat. Gifts. Breezes. The breezes are there. I might not be able to feel them because of my sins, but they're there because the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam told them. What do you say? That maybe, go pata'arrahu laha. Present yourself to them. Present yourself to the breezes of Allah. That in asabahu shaykhun minna, maybe if something touches you of it, maybe you'll never be wretched again. That's what tonight's all about. Allah Ta'ala freeing souls from the hellfire. That's what tonight's all about. In this bara'a, laylatul bara'a, is the night of freedom from the hellfire. It's the night of freedom from the hellfire. The Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa many a hadith, say that Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, that the Prophet said, on this night, she saw a worship from him that she never saw. She says, he, he, you know, that he, he spent so long in Sajda that the Sayyidina Aisha told her, and said, I thought he passed away. 
that he was in a sajda on the Nishaman for so long, she wasn't sure that maybe the Messenger of Allah had passed away. And in narrations, he mentioned, what's, he, what's the dua he's making on Nishaban? Ummati, Ummati. Because that's his concern, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in every single moment. His Ummah. What's his Ummah going to be doing tonight? On day the Nisman Sha'ban. The preparation, this is all preparation. And Ramadan is coming, and Ramadan is better. But this tonight, I, there's so much that could be said. I'll tell you one hadith. I always think about this hadith when nights like this come. And I think it's a very powerful hadith. It's hadith narrated in the Sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam tells us that a man will come, that, that, that there'll be a man, and some say he's the last man of the hellfire. The last person, the last believer taken out of the hellfire. And they'll hear, he'll be screaming. And some say there'll be two of them, but they'll be screaming her. And he'll scream so severely that Allah Rabbil Izzati wa Jalal will say, bring him to me. Bring him to me. And he'll ask, and there's different narrations of what happens, but there's a conversation that takes place. And he asks, how, you know, how was the place, كيف المقالد, how, كيف المعد, how was the abode? He said, it's a maqal. It's a horrible place. The hellfire that he's just come out of. And in another narration, Allah Ta'ala asked him, why do you scream? And he says, I scream for your mercy. I scream for your mercy. And then Allah Ta'ala will say, if that's what it is, he says to the angels, Raddu Abdi, take my slave back. Take, my, take him back to the hellfire. Because that is my mercy. And Allah Ta'ala knows that's what his mercy is. And then the man will say to Allah Ta'ala at that moment, Right. And I wish I knew the Arabic right now, because, but it's beautiful because he says, I didn't think that once you've taken me out of the hellfire, that you'd ever return me back in. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you'd do that. That's not the way you are, Ya Rab. That you take me out of the hellfire, you would grant me that salvation, and then you take me back. And then Allah Ta'ala says to the angel, Da'u Abdi, leave my slave. Leave my slave. You know the Ibrah, the lesson in that? is that as long as you get your foot out of the hellfire, Allah Ta'ala will never put you back in. Sure. And that's what tonight's all about. That you claw your way as best you can so that a part of you is outside the fire of hell. Because once you're out, Allah Ta'ala will never put you back in. Because He's too merciful to do that. What does Allah gain by punishing you? You think Allah created you to punish you? Ibn Qayyim al says, Allah Ta'ala took you out of the hellfire. Allah Ta'ala took you out of paradise. لَعَلَّ يُعِيدُ إِلَيْهَا So he could put you back in. That's what it's for. There's a tribulation, there's a test. It's hard sometimes, but Allah Ta'ala wants you to go to paradise. Right? Ajeeb, the, the affair of Allah is very strange. That's why we don't understand it. But what, what's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu How strange are people that they will enter paradise بِسَّلَاسِدْ in chains. And the ulama have many interpretations. One of those is people will try their best. Like the Prophet says, the example of the people of Mecca is like people trying to fling themselves into the fire of hell. And the Prophet is holding, he's trying to grab them and pull them back. Like they're hufram in a nut, they're literally on the edge of the hell and the Prophet is pulling them back. Tonight's one of those nights, the pull is very strong. Let it pull you back. Don't let yourself fall into the fire of hell. That Allah Ta'ala. We pray that Allah Ta'ala allows us to attain His forgiveness from the Lord. Amen. We ask Allah Ta'ala that He allows us to step out of the fire of hell and never ever return. Amen. We ask Allah Ta'ala, because this is the night the Messenger of Allah is allowed to make visitation of the graveyard. We ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad the living and the deceased. We ask Allah Ta'ala, like the, 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 like the Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his concern on this night, his Ummah, we ask Allah Ta'ala to have mercy upon the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad wherever they may be, especially there's much suffering, there's much suffering and hardship the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going through. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless them. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless the efforts of the Baqi Center. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless our teacher. I always, I met Muhammad Hijab, he said, introduce who is this person? I said, this is my father's teacher. And that's the fakhr for me. Really, that Imam Saab is, is, is a stalwart of this community. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless him, and give him a long life, and allow us to continue to benefit from him. But, um, and Mawlana Thamana, we ask Allah Ta'ala to bless all efforts for deen, and to make us sincere in everything that we do. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless us, to bless this gathering. We ask Allah Ta'ala in the way that he has gathered us here today, in this beautiful gathering. We ask Allah Ta'ala that he allows us to wake up on Tahajjud and worship him again. But we ask Allah Ta'ala the way he has gathered us here tonight, we ask Allah Ta'ala that He allows us to gather again at the hold of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to drink from His blessed hands. Subhanallah, Allahumma wa bihamdi wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta wa nashadu 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 wa nash